Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, see? It's even better the second time around. And the ones on the recording, they won't understand that. Psalm 59, 16 through 17. This verse is worth reading twice because it, it speaks a lot about the way you are when you wake up in the morning and realizing you, the Lord's brought you another day and what he has done for you in the past and in the future he will do for you. It says, but I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For God is my defense and the God of my mercy. Stand with me and sing number 126. My country, tis of thee. I think it would be appropriate on this July 4th weekend, prior to July 4th, that we say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you, Lord, for our freedoms. Lord, be able to worship as we please. Lord, I pray that we would be able to retain these, Lord, until you're coming again. Lord, I just pray that you would uh, be with this country, Lord. Give us a, a desire to see you healing, Lord, through your hand. Help us, Lord, as Christians to be able to spread the word, Lord, while the time is available. Lord, help us not to shy away from it. Help us, Lord, to learn of you, to grow in you, and to do the things that we ought to do. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Pastor. Look at our flag, and we're excited about the country that it represents. And uh, uh, one of my older gentlemen, who's going to be with Jesus right now, uh, said a couple of years ago, he said, the uh, he fought in World War II. They came in, and he was in the 10th grade and said, anybody want to be a fighter pilot? And he said, I do. He didn't get to be one, but he was a PT bomber pilot. You all know, you know what that means, okay? And so they picked him out. He enlisted in the military when he was 16 out of the 10th grade and fought through, and he was a squadron leader. By the time he got to D-Day, he was a squadron leader. On his 18th birthday, 
June the 6th. Think about what I just said. And he said, the country that I fought for is not quite the same country that I live in right now. And there's only one reason for that. There's only one reason. I'm going to preach to you about countries and what God promises countries today. He says a lot. He said this. This is the reason your preacher's giving it to you. God's people forgot our freedoms came from God, not the government. And so... When you believe your government can supply it all, I'm not anti-government. I kind of like government, amen? I would never want to be a part of, that's not my calling. But I will tell you that I appreciate the country, the government that we have set up when it operates, and it will only operate in the right way when you have the right people doing it. Come on, you know what I mean? You know, when you put the fox over the hen house, things are going to go wrong. So that's where we're at. When God's people do the right thing, God will do the right thing with our country. I promise you. And so I'm going to tell you that the one responsible for all this is us. And the only when, and when I can get, think what would happen to America tomorrow if every American who's saved knows the Lord, claims the Lord, started living for the Lord. We don't live in that age. I'm preaching about the age we live in tonight. You can be here about my third part in being ashamed of the message. And it's not being ashamed of your master. Jesus said a lot about that. So stand up for the Lord. Do what you do. You say, well, preacher, you know, there's just not a time or a place. You know, I, I know that I'm weird. I create the time and I create the place. You ever taken radiation? I'm middle, I'm in the middle of radiation treatments. You say, well, what do you mean? You know all the clothes you were born with? That's how many you got on. They give you this little washcloth. <clears throat> you see, what do you do? I talked to them about Jesus, the Bible, things that are going on. And they talk, they, their questions was, so what are you going to do next week? Since Bible school is over and you're moving into this, I said, they're going to camp, you know. And you say, well, what do you do? I'm serious, guys. I'm going to be there unless they say, shut up. You can't talk to us about God. And I'm going to go, which part is it that bothers you? I won't do it. And I'm going to go through all the parts. Okay. I, I'm telling you that they're pretty young people that are running the, the equipment. And I mean young, they're under 30. Do you know, I said something to them this week. They said, what are you preaching Sunday morning? I said, I'm preaching about what the scripture has to say about countries. They said the Bible has something to say about countries. I said, yeah, our country was founded on biblical principles. No, because see, we're not allowed to have Bible stuff in our country. We know that. No, you don't. It was founded on biblical principles. And I said all but two of the constitutional signers were Christians. You're kidding me. We thought it was done by people who didn't know Jesus and they just let Christians come in. You know what's wrong with our country? You say, well, somebody's not teaching them. Guess who's not? Us. Right? Yep. We're not. Your kids ought to know that. You ought to tell them that. You say they don't care. Well, tell them twice then. But I'm telling you this. If God's people, you already know the verse, don't you? And we're going to pray. We're going to... I'm pledging the flag is a tremendous thing. It may not mean a whole lot to you. I'm going to sing in a minute, so I'm not going to try to get real emotional. Okay. You spend about two, three months in the jungle. And you get to walk out. And you see one of those. 
ragged and tattered, hanging on a bent tree limb over an American installation. It's a pretty scene in the whole world. God bless America. Father, we ask you for that. I only know how to do one thing, and that's if we serve God, God will take care of us. I understand when God carried Israel out of the land, a lot of good people went, but the majority had turned against you. Help us not to be so. Help us, Lord, to turn our hearts back to you. Help us to understand where our freedoms come from. Help us, Lord, to reinstate you in the place. We can say, God bless America, and not be ashamed to say it. And we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. time I'm going to have Karina come and read our mission letter before we do our class congregation. The missionaries of the month are James and Lori Brent, missionaries in Mexico City. We celebrated Mother's Day slash Teacher's Day with 53 in attendance before we even started the started James James had the opportunity to meet one of the boyfriends of one of the ladies at the end of the service each mother honored and received a script a, and a, a bookmark and a rose mothers each mother was honored with and received a script bookmark and a rose after the service the church provided a light lunch during the lunch gifts are given Thanks to those who teach in some way. It's exciting to have seven teachers, not including us, that receive radiation. Recognition. <laughs> the church has a group text where we can share prayer requests and announcements. One of our newer ladies, Nayeli shared a prayer request to pray for a friend who's suffering with cancer. However, she has copied her friend's post from Facebook, and in the post, her friend, she, um, she mentioned that the financial needs that she had to be able to able to act afford some medical tests. Nayeli was not asking for donations. She was just asking for prayer. Before we could make that announcement, two people messaged me and that they wanted to help with special offering on on Sunday. We mentioned a special a special offering that she that said and said if anyone else wanted to give they could. The afternoon Nelly and her husband went to visit Violetta. They they were able to present the gospel to her and Vi Violetta accepted Christ as her savior. Afterwards, they gave her an offering from the church explaining the church members wanted to show God's love 
Although we didn't we didn't plan the offering. God worked through the, his children, making it happen in request as a new name written in the book of life. As always, each of you are such a blessing to us and, and to the missionaries in Mexico City, in Mexico. God bless you all. James and Lori Graham. Okay. Amen. Stand with me and sing number 127. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Oh 
if you have, and I'm going to turn to the microphone. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Psalms. And we're going to get back to where we belong here pretty quick. For some reason, Microsoft hates me lately. I don't, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it'll be there. If you have your Bibles and turn there with me, we'll get started in just a little bit. I'm going to do two things. <clears throat> there is no good thing can come out of, a, of abusing tobacco or alcohol. Do you know that? But if there ever was one good thing, never smoked in my life and never understood people who wanted to. Does that make sense? Yeah, I thought so. No, smoking will not send you to hell. It makes you smell like you've been there. But anyhow, I just never did it. But in the place of the country I grew up in, everybody chewed tobacco. Weird, huh? Well, everybody grew it. Well, we, I never heard a preacher preach against any of that. Half the money in their churches came through guys who tithed on their tobacco plants. Seriously. You say, well, you won't think about that, do we? You say, what did I do? I got saved. In the, the, time, the minute I got saved, God took that away from me, and I never used it ever since. About, <clears throat> oh, 10 years, 12 years after I got saved, uh, my wife and I went to meet the guy who was going to marry her mother. Most of you know Earl. All right, He was a dentist. He said, I want to look at your teeth. He looked at my mouth, listen to me, and said, you used to chew tobacco, didn't you? And then he told me what kind it was because of what it did to my teeth and gums. Just a little thing out there, guys. I want you to understand. Anything you do you're not supposed to do brings with it something that'll probably stick with you for the rest of your life. Think what I'm saying. If there's only one good thing about it, okay? There's a place over here that never grew back. It's perfect for putting a halls into it when I'm preaching. <laughs> God always gives a blessing out of everything that goes wrong. Amen. Psalms 33, you're there with me, and it says, The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. You know what that means? It means it does not change. He's, he's not going to be, he didn't say one thing and it applies forever. One of my pet peeves, and I'm, I want you to get this right now, is listening to a preacher and he preaches and he'll say, in this time, this applied, but right now it doesn't. Now, I understand most of you guys never untie your donkey on the Sabbath day and take it out to water. All right. But we got something worse. We have cars and we do all kinds of things. I try my very, very best not to do anything I don't have to do on Sunday. I love preaching, teaching. I don't wait and mow my yard on Sunday. Almost every neighbor I got does. You can't sleep on Sunday afternoon in my house because it's mowers and weed eaters and on every side. Because their day is Saturday, so they take the Lord's and do theirs. You say, was that a sin? No, but it irritates me. You know what I mean? We, we ought to be different people as saved people. Our nation ought to be different because it's built upon the principles of God. And no, everybody in the beginning was not a Christian. But almost every man who had a part, and I'm telling you, I mean, way, way, way above the two people who were in it, who didn't consider themselves Christians, were deists. They believed in God and followed. One of those was Benjamin Franklin. He didn't sign, of course, but he was one of those that motivated them. He was the guy who said in the Continental Congress they couldn't get anything done, and he said, look, we're all going to either hang together or we're going to hang separately. We've been here. You're arguing. Everybody has all their stuff. I propose that we take off, I think he said three days, and... We're going to do nothing but meet and pray with each other for God to give us the ability. And what they couldn't do in seven months, they did in about three weeks, and it was done. Our Constitution. They believed in God, and they believed in serving God, and they believed in the power of prayer and doing right and being right. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. The thoughts of His heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Notice He didn't say, Blessed is Israel because they're my people. 
Because see, this applies to every nation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and to whom He hath chosen for His own inheritance. Now I want you to get this really quick. As far as I know, God, by His own volition and will, started a country of people, and it's Israel. Only one other nation on the face of the earth was ever started by a group of people getting together and begging God to allow them to start a nation under Him. And that's the United States of America. We chose that. God never forced that on us. We chose that. And God made us great. See, I'm not a believer that military makes you great. And I, I love military people. I really do. I got all these quotes that I love that music guys that I admire that worked, but I can't use them in church because they, they weren't church people. Okay? They talk with a different language if you've ever been in the military. All right? The Lord looketh from heaven, beholdeth all the sons of men. See, He didn't limit this to Israel. But I'm telling you this. Because we pleaded with God to get started, and God said, I'll do it. I don't care how long we exist. He'll hold us to that first commitment. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Psalms 33 says in verse 16, There is no king save by a multitude of hosts. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. The eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him and upon him that hope in mercy. How many of y'all have ever mentioned the battle of 1812? You know, in 1814, took a little trip. Remember, along with Colonel Jackson, remember that? Y'all just know the song. Well, the British decided they were going to come back and take what we had gotten from France. You, you know what, guys? They outnumbered our troops like six or seven to one. And you know this place that ever right now stands in such fragmented diversity? Men came from everywhere. Not just white guys, black guys, American Indians, Chinese that moved over here and had adopted the country. They came and stood in that battle and made up the difference in repelling an enemy of our country. See, that's the difference of what we were and where we are and how God has a part of doing something with us when we get under Him. You, I don't know about you guys. Everybody that's saved doesn't agree with my doctrinal theology. Do they Do they yours? When I get to heaven, God will tell us which one of us were wrong. I'm a Bible guy. If you can show it to me in the book and I can read it without you changing the words, then we'll hang in there together. You say, well, you know, when the angel asked and said, you know, he was going to go fight the devils, were there? I don't know, and I don't care. You say, well, don't you want to know what they were doing out there? If God had wanted me to know, he'd have told me. He just told Daniel, I've been fighting the devil's group, and I've got to go back now and fight them again. And you say, how are they doing? I don't know. Can you see angels out there with swords clashing? I don't know if angels fight like that. They might have had laser swords. Yeah. You know, I can, I, I don't know. Sometimes when you get a truth, that don't mean you have all the truth. But in the Word of God, we have all the truth that God needs for us to have. And we have a promise here that it's applied to Israel. If you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I set before you and shall go and serve other gods, then I will pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I've given them at this house and will sanctify for my name. And I will cast out of my sight and will make it a proverb and a byword among many nations. I'm going to stop there. If he did it to Israel, what makes you think you have the gout to say? He'll never do it to us. Come on. Get real with me, will you? You need to learn some history. Watch the nations of the world. When they followed after God, even the most ruthless and un... Remember when God sent that guy named Jonah over? And he's going to preach to Nineveh. They wasn't a more wicked group of people in the whole world. 
when they repented, God gave them grace. That applies to everybody. See, the problem in America, guys, is not a... I know we have all these weird things going on, and lack of, but the Scripture says when you, when you throw out the truth, you believe a lie. And that's kind of where we are in a lot of areas. But see, the truth went out when we threw God out. That happened. Most of that happened in my lifetime. I think I was in the fifth or sixth grade when they ruled you couldn't have the Ten Commandments in the schools anymore. Well, that would have corrupted us, wouldn't it? Thou shalt not steal. Hmm. A great man said one time that when you take away the ten great laws, you replace them with 10,000 laws that bring you into bondage. Uh, we have, this applies to us. Look with me. This promise to all nations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Come on, guys, listen to me. We have cities in our country that if they only had two dozen people killed every weekend, it would be a good week. Something's wrong. Be wise, therefore, you kings, and you instructed, you judges there. Serve the Lord in fear. Rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. Notice he's talking to kings and judges. They're over people. They're rulers, not just to individuals. Our founding fathers, listen to what they had to say. We in America do not have a government by the majority. We have a government by the majority who participate. All tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for the people of good conscience <clears throat> to remain silent. To remain silent. John Adams said, our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to govern any other. What do you think he thought? Ben Franklin said, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations have become corrupt and vicious, they have more masters. He's talking about us. Samuel Adams said, the summit of it all is, we would most truly enjoy the gift of heaven if we would most and truly enjoy the gift of heaven. He's talking about our country and our freedom. Let us become a virtuous people. Then shall we both deserve and enjoy it. While on the other hand, if we universally vicious and debauched in our manners, though the form of our constitution carries the face of the most exalted freedom, we shall in reality be the most abject slaves. See, that, this, this wasn't 14 years ago. You understand that? Jesus promised rest to those who are serving. I'm talking about countries and people. It applies to every individual. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I promise you right now, though you're working the very best to ignore everything in God, your greatest benefit is when you give your life to God, and He takes over your everyday operation. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is right. Here's where we're going wrong, guys. You ready? We're demanding that all them people out there get right with God so we can have a better country. Every one of them sorry devils better get right with God. Every one of those people who are not doing right ought to do it. Every one of those, you know, they ought to straighten up their lives and they ought to do the right things and they ought to obey the Ten Commandments. And Wait, that's not the way Christianity works. It starts with me. Me first. It was with me. Jesus didn't say, look around for a light. He said, let your light so shine. It applies to people. It applies to every nation. King Asa built a fence cities in Judah and for the land, and he had no war in those days because the Lord had given him rest. 
You will not find any great struggle that America's had that it would be no difficulty at all for us to point and say God was on our side. Now, I want you to look at this. I like that. Look at that. It is my concern, Abraham Lincoln, whether God, it's not my concern whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side, for God's always right. It doesn't matter if He's on my side. It matters if I'm on His side. Can two walk together except they be agreed? I don't know. That's an individual, but it is a nation as well. If you see, well, God will just have to shape up if He wants to have fellowship with me. No, He won't. He's God. He doesn't change. I'm the same yesterday and today and forever. We have to understand. Thus saith the Lord, I'll bring evil upon this place. Now He's talking about Israel as a nation. And the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah. Do you know where all those things were written at? Yeah, is there one of those mystic prophecy places somewhere? No. Moses wrote them out and said, this is what's going to happen if you serve God, and this is what's going to happen if you don't. He not only told them what would go good when they did it, he told them what would go bad. He told them who the people were that were going to come and get them, what they would speak like, and where they were coming from. And Babylon didn't have two streets to cross together at the time. That's the promises of God. God promises fellowship to those who are separated to. The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This is one of the first verses I ever learned. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. That's, I like that. I want to walk with God. It applies to people. You know what? I know we, we don't know much about, we know much, almost everything about how many stripes are on a zebra, but if I ask you about any kind of reality of life, you go, what? Can the rush, that's a reed. You know, a cattail or something like that, it's a rush, okay? Grow up without mire? No, you don't see them growing in the desert very much. Can the flag grow without water? No, because they're water plants. While it is yet in its greenness and not cut down, it withereth before any other herb. So are the house of all that forget God. What would, what would the world be like without water? You could have everything and every plant and every soil and all that, but if we just took it away, the water it would perish, wouldn't it? He's telling you without God, that's what happens. There is no hope without God. Consider this, you forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, that him that ordered this conversation aright, will I show the right, the salvation of my God. You know what he said? If you praise me, I'll, I'll listen, because God does that. If you do right, I'll show you stuff you never believed and bring it into your life, if you do right. I, I remember being part of a group one time. They said, we only got three rules. Be what you're supposed to do. Do what you're supposed to do. And do it when you're supposed to be doing it. There was only three rules. You don't need 40,000 laws to cover that. That covers it pretty well. It applies to nation. If I shut up heaven, there be no rain. If I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and here it is, guys. We're all prone to this. Turn from my wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend to the prayer that's made in this place. He's talking to Israel. It applies to us. He promises prosperity to those who obey him. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I don't know about you guys. I never wanted to be a multimillionaire, especially if there was anything connected with it that I had to give up God to get it. 
I feel sorry for all the people that have grown up in Christian homes and never known what it's like to be without God in your life. It's counted a small thing. I had great parents. Do you know that? I had really good parents. Never thought about one of these days I'm going to get off the bus and one of them's going to be gone. I didn't appreciate that as much as when I got old and realized that a lot of people that I love don't have that. They don't have two good parents. And they struggle with a life because of that. They become, a lot of them come really do really well. But boy, you're way better off when you got two. I want you to get that. The steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him. I've been young, now I'm old, yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor seed begging bread. He is merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, do good, and dwell forevermore. Do you notice that every time it said there's a change of heart and a change of attitude, there's a change in action in every one of these verses? Did you see that? If you're living right and doing right, not only God will know it, but I'll know it. For the Lord loveth judgment, forsaketh not his saints, they're preserved forever. God promised prosperity to nations. And this shall come to pass that thou hearken diligently to the Lord thy God, do all that's in his commandments, I command that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Now, if you read down in the next three verses, I, I didn't put them in there, but all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of thy God. Because the next verse down says, just not the next verse, about three verses down, thou shalt be the head, not the tail. Is it really said that? Yeah. No. I, I'm thinking... Yeah, if I was picked out to be a body part, head sounds way better, amen? <laughs> God promises judgment. Look where all these verses are from. Deuteronomy, it shall come to pass if thou hearken not to the voice. All these curses. Thou shalt grope at noonday as blind people in darkness shall not prosper in thy way. Thou shalt become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword among nations. Every one of these, uh, they weren't like somebody made them up in the last. you understand? These are set ground rules for people, God's people, and God's people that, that make a nation and form it together, whether it's Israel or the United States of America. Now, I, I want you to say, well, you know what we need? We need Russia too. I'll tell you what, God will take care of Russia when we get right with God. What about the rest of the world? You, you know what? I got this book. It's rare. I have the only one. Nobody else is ever allowed to have all this information. Do you know what it tells me? There's coming a day when they're going to form a one world alliance under one world leader who's going to be possessed by Satan himself. And he's going to march against everything to do with God and everybody that is God's. He's going to try to destroy them all. It's inevitable what happens out there in the world. That does not mean that it's inevitable to happen in the United States of America. I don't know about you, but when that man, we call him the Antichrist, which is, we kind of add that name to it. Only one time in all the Bible, the words used to describe a man. The rest of the time, it's a statement of actions. When that Antichrist shows up on the scene, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be gone. Do you understand that? He's not going to make me go through that. I'm not going to see the wrath of God on the world because I'm going to be with Him. I might get to see it, but I want Him to be a part of it. God's going to judge nations. See the verse 28, verse 13? Thou shalt be the head, not the tail. You thought I was kidding, didn't you? Goes on through the same thing. Every one of those are promised ahead of time. You understand? I want you to get, God didn't just make these up at the last minute. I got to think of some stupid rule to get these guys to quit that stuff. He told them ahead of time. And it goes for us. I set before you this day blessing and curse. Mm, which one do you want, George? Oh, let me think about it. Do I want to be cursed today by God or blessed by God? Is that a choice? 
You can make it. I want to be blessed. I want God to bless my country. I want God to bless my people. I want God to bless my church. I want Him to bless my life. I want Him to bless our work. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. A curse if you will not obey the commandments. If you think you're an exemption to that, you're in for big trouble. If you think as a nation, any nation is exempt to that, we're in big trouble. We've thrown God out of our schools, thrown Him out of our government, we've thrown Him out of personal places, we've thrown Him out of our businesses, we've thrown Him out of out at any part. You can't have His Word out in there. You're not supposed to be able to pray somewhere. Why? Why is that true? And it's only Christianity. Have you noticed that? It doesn't apply to all the other guys. Just Christianity. Because there's only one thing God really blesses, and there's only one thing that Satan's scared to death of. That's a group of people who know the Lord as Jesus Christ, who dedicate their life, who walk with Him, who live for Him, and who are willing to get on their knees and beg God to interfere in the situation we're in. I shall call heaven and earth to record you this day against you. I've said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, look, Choose life. Choose life. God's going to judge nations. And people ask me, they say, do you have PTSD problems? Mm -mm. Sure don't. I don't have any of those. Really don't. You say, what, how do you know you don't? Because if they need me to and I was physically capable, I'd go do the same thing again. Amen? How many of you vets out there just like me? Yep, I'll just go do it again. I was sitting at a table one time with Cheryl's boss. I didn't have anything to do with the guy. And he was talking. He got started to tell him how stupid people were for fighting to defend our country how stupid people in the military were for living and dying for freedom. How stu I turned to my wife and she was there and I said, we need to leave now before I turn this table over on top of him and do stuff that I shouldn't be doing. Didn't I do that? You see, you wouldn't do that, would you? You know how many great men and women have given their lives we just went through June this month, June the 6th. You understand how many hundred thousand men hit the beaches? About one third of them never made it across without at least being wounded. You don't think that's important to me? You ever seen the pictures of the graveyards in France? And an old friend of mine, he made a trip to France to go back and see those up in his 80s. Said he got there and started through the entrance. And you know, if you go into another country, you got to get your passport out. He said he coming in and he got off the plane and went through, and I don't know what they call it in France, you have to show your passport. And the guy told him he was having trouble finding his passport. He said, well, you cannot come into this country without a passport. We will never allow that. He said, the last time I was here, they didn't ask me for a passport. Y'all get that? Okay. The Son of Man shall come in His glory and the angels with Him shall sit upon the throne. Listen to this. As a nation, you're a soldier or you're anybody else. I'm under orders. You're under orders if you're a military. You do what you're told. You're hoping your intel's anywhere near close to right. And you and everybody that's with you is life's on the line. You say, what if you're wrong? 
That's where the judgment of the nations comes in. I'm under the authority of a nation. You say, what? Well, oh, preacher, you're not, you can't do, you, you, you got to always obey God no matter who it hurts. Now listen to me, I'm going to tell you something. When we win a kid to the Lord in this church, and we ask them, say, do you want to be baptized? Yes, we do. We go to their parents and say, is it all right if your child gets baptized in our church? If they say no, we don't turn to the kid and say, it's okay, we're just going to do it when they're not looking. How can you be right with God when you already break one known commandment? Honor your mother and father. You say, well, you think God's going to overlook me? You're going to tell me this. Listen to me. You're going to disobey your parents to be right with God? There's already a rule written out there. You say, what happens? When they turn 18, they can come get baptized. They're still going to heaven. But I've almost never, ever, ever had a sense when the kid did the right thing, the child lived the right thing, and we did the right thing. They didn't come around later and say, you know, I think it's time for this kid to be baptized. And a good portion of the time, we then win the parents. See, that's the rule. Parents are in charge of kids, not governments and not churches. Guess what? God's in charge of nations. And all they, he shall gather before all nations and separate them with one and sheep as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats, the sheep on the right hands, but the goat on the left. Look at this. Then shall the king to say on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Look at the other group. Then shall he say on the left hand, Depart from me, you accursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for his devil and his angels. God is going to judge nations. So he's already told you. He blesses nations and he curses nations. Curse are the people that walk away from God. How do you fix what we're in, guys? How do you do? What do you do with it? How do we get to where we're supposed to be? I'm telling you, this is the way it does. You ever been to a revival? I, I don't have enough fingers and toes to tell you how many revivals that I've preached. I don't have enough of them to tell you how many I've been in in my whole lifetime. But I've only ever seen one church revival. Now I was a young man. My pastor had resigned and Dr. Al Jones came down to Melbourne, Florida to Calvary Baptist Church. He said, you know what we need? The church had been running about 800 and now was running about 200. Great chaos, fragmented every which way you can think of. Half the people had, that went there had gone, been working at Cape. They closed it down one of those times. They closed it down. Everybody left. It was a, it was a mess. He brought this guy in and said, we need a revival. And he brought a guy in. He's going to be with Jesus now. And I want you to understand, I tell everybody all the time, I want to tell you his name. He didn't just fall off the turnip truck, but he did drive the truck to town. The most unlikely guy you've ever seen in your life. He brought him down to preach revival to all of us. Dignified. Half our church was filled with Yankees. They showed up an hour and a half before church to listen to the music. You think I'm kidding? He did everything that you can think of. One night, he jumped up on the pew with people sitting in it and walked down the top of the pews from one pew to the next one. But he preached this. Repent. You say, what happened? The church repented. And they turned to God. That week we had Bible school in the morning. Revival at night. Try that right now and see somebody shows up. And ask me again, what's wrong with our country? We had 
240 people saved. On Sunday afternoon, the preacher couldn't baptize them all during the service. He did what he did. The associate pastor stepped in and took turns. And between churches, we baptized, me and Tom Moore, 54 more. Then the evening service started and the preacher took over again and baptized the rest of them. They had got right with God. They scattered out in the town. A whole bunch of my ladies, not with my ladies, but our church ladies, got together and went down to one of them parlors that were about half a mile down the road and they all marched in there together. And you know what they did? They got down on their knees with the ladies that were working in there Shared the Lord Jesus. Every one of them got saved. Come to our church and the place closed down. Bars closed down. The city mayor came out to find out what was going on. In two years, the church went from running 250 to 1,250 and it changed the whole area. That's a revival. When God's people get their heart right, quit bickering with each other, quit demanding their own time, willing to do whatever is necessary, God will send us a revival. But it's God's people. If my people, we're telling God to make them wicked old people get right with God and stop it. Show me that in your Bible. You show me where it says that that's what you're supposed to ask God to do. My Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the... You notice he wasn't talking about what we're supposed to get them people out there to do. It's us. You know when America will turn back? You know when America will thrive? You know when America will be great? You know when America will stand again? And we can be proud of everything that our government's doing and what our people are doing. And it, It's when God's people get right with God. We won't have it. You say, well, preacher, you think that's going to happen? See, I don't decide that, and God don't decide. We do. We do. If you're here and you're already thinking about what you're going to do wicked when you get out of church today, then we won't. What's wrong with America? Is us. And I'm going to pray with you. It's your preacher. Nobody loves America more than me, guys. My father died from radiation poisoning that he got fighting for America in World War II. Nothing. Nobody loves America more than me. I put more people and talk them in. I should get recruiters pay. I bet at least 25 or 30 guys over the years out of my churches have gone into the military. My nephews, my son, those out of our own churches, a lot of them went in and stayed. The children at the children's home. I told the boys, when you get out of high school, go join the military till you figure out what God wants you to do. I hear from over the years, guess what they did? They went and joined the military. You say, what do you think? Everybody would do that? No, I don't. But I'm telling you something. We're talking about, do I think it's a great place? I don't want to go anyplace else. Bad as it is right now, I ain't moving. But I'd love to see it back again. Did God do it with Israel? Two times He gave them revivals and extended the judgment away. 
I think God can do it with us, but it has to start somewhere. And not with them people. When when they get right, boy. It starts with you. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to know you as Savior, but what a great responsibility it is too. I never understood that as a young Christian, but over the years I've understood that if I'm going to be in effect for the Lord, it isn't me that's doing it. It's the Spirit of God that does it because of what He can do through me and with me. Lord, I believe the same thing is true with our country. I'm begging God, please bless America. Please, Lord, give us the government we really need, not the one we deserve. Give us leaders who know God and give us people who will stand for the right, no matter if they have to face all kinds of criticism. Turn us back to God. Let us send missionaries and reach people and serve you, Lord, as long as it's possible. But, Lord, I already know what you said. It's up to us. Help us, Lord, as a people to get back our zeal for Jesus. Talk to him about God. Do what we can do, being involved. But live the lives that God can honor our works. And then, Lord, you'll bless our country, heal our land, and hear our prayers. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me, please. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for what a great God that you are, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the freedoms that we have in you, Lord, that we didn't receive a a spirit of bondage, Lord, but we received a spirit of adoption, Lord, and and the things that come along with it, Lord. Help us, Lord, to to share the good news to the world, Lord. Help our life, Lord, be able to to reflect, Lord, what, what you've given us, Lord. And help us, Lord, to be good witnesses and have a good testimony for you, Lord. Lord, we love you and we pray all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.